Oh my god, there's a new NVIDIA Vulcan driver, 532.17. Should I use it? Is it better? Well, in today's video, I'll be comparing the new NVIDIA Vulcan driver versus my personal favorite, 535.98. So sit down, strap in, let's go. Right, so before we get started with today's video, please just head over to my YouTube page. Guys, if you subscribed, please just make sure that you have that little bowl icon selected so that when I release a new video, you are notified. It really will help me with the algorithm. I'm looking to grow. And then guys, for people that aren't subscribed, at the end of the video, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. But at that, what's the video about? So somebody recently asked me in the comment section to test the latest NVIDIA Vulcan beta driver 532.17 so that's exactly what i did i compared it against my favorite single player driver that i like to use which is 535.98 it's not great with latency but it has fantastic one percent lows that's why i use it um and yeah like i said i'm not 100 percent clued up on vulcan but from my understanding it's a driver that in uh, nvidia driver that enables you to play on windows as well as linux um, and then just to tell you a little bit more about what Vulcan drivers supposedly do. So just starting off here, Vulcan has less latency and overhead than OpenGL or Direct3D and can help your system reach new levels of performance in simpler terms. Vulcan can help developers avoid CPU bottlenecks that limit performance. And in my books, that sounds pretty good. So at that, let's get to my results. So as you can see, here's the latest uh, Vulcan driver, 532.17. If you want to try this driver out, I will uh, link or I'll, uh, post the link in the description of this video so you can download it. It's via Guru3D and I tested against the latest official or the second latest official NVIDIA driver, 538, 5.98. So guys, let's get to my results. All my games are tested at medium settings. Where FSR 2.0 or 2.1 was available, I used a quality setting with the exception of Returnal. Returnal, my computer's very, un or my laptop's very unexpected for Returnal. So I used the low settings preset with FSR set to balanced. And then I am currently playing Resident Evil 4 Remake to death. So I just used my in-game settings, which is a mixture of medium, high and low, and with the FSR set to quality. Guys, um, I, I'm, unfortunately I can only take single player games. I am limited for space. I don't really enjoy FPS or online games. So I don't have any online games. So unfortunately I can't benchmark those. Uh, so your, your results may vary if you play online games. And then lastly, I test on a GTX 1650 laptop. I've never had an RTX card or RTX laptop, unfortunately. So your results may vary if you're on an RTX platform. Right. So for the latest driver, you might notice that my, my results are a little bit different because I, after months and months and months, I finally got River Tuna statistics to work. So I've got an in-game toggle where I can just toggle my benchmark so I don't have to alt tab out of games and into games to get my 1% uh, lows and my average FPS working. I can just do it in-game now, which is great. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. So guys, all my games are tested in medium settings. When I added up all the average FPSs, over nine games, my total FPS was 661, divided by nine, and my average FPS per game was 73.44. And then I added up all the 1% lows, and then same again, I, the total 1% lows over nine games was 510. And then when I divide that by nine, my average 1% low for 535.98 is 56.67. So when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, it gives me a stability for 535.98 of 77.17%, which is why I use this driver. It's fantastically stable if you're not playing online games, single player. Online games has got a DPS latency issue, unfortunately. And then, okay, I put your 530, oh damn it, sorry man. This is 532.17. So I tested all the, all the games, I added up all the average FPSs and it gave me a total FPS over 9 games of 652 divided by 9 is 72.44 and then the same thing again 
for all the one percent lows i added them up and over nine games my um my one percent lows were 503 divided by nine and then my average one percent low per game is 55.89 which is a pretty damn decent result for this um this nvidia vulcan driver so when i divide the one percent lows by the average fps it gives me a stability percentage of 77.15 percent so you can see in terms of stability of the driver it's just as good as 535.98 um, but the one percent lows are a little bit lower and the average sps is also a little bit lower but because they're both lower when i divide them by each other i still get 77.15 percent which is practically the same as 30 uh, 535.98 so guys if you're experiencing latency issues with 535.98 uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you it's definitely gonna perform better but maybe give um 532.17 a try because apparently it has good latency because as you can see the stability of this uh nvidia vulcan driver is pretty damn good so what i will do is in the description of this video i'll just link this page here the nvidia vulcan beta driver and then you just scroll down and you can just click on this link over here and then the driver will download automatically Apparently it has good latency. So when you pair the good latency with the good and strong 1% low performance, it's actually a pretty solid option in my, in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. Guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. As always, it's people like you that make a difference in this world. Cheers. Thank mm -hmm. you.